I haven't used the cable for PC VR in years, and today I'm gonna teach you how to get a flawless wireless PC VR experience on your Quest 2, Quest 3, or 3S with no stutters and extremely low latency. Imagine your home network as a busy highway leading into a tunnel. Your red Nissan GTR is the wireless VR data speeding from your PC to your Quest headset. It's fast and sleek, designed for high performance, but here's the problem. This isn't a private racetrack, it's a public highway. Now think of the other cars on the highway as your family's data traffic. Your mom's watching Netflix in 4K in her SUV, your sister is blasting Spotify in her hatchback, and your dad is playing Call of Duty on his PlayStation in his pickup truck. They're all trying to squeeze into the same tunnel as your GTR. The more traffic there is, the more congestion you face. Your once smooth ride turns into a stop and go nightmare with latency and stutters, making your wireless PC VR experience feel like driving a supercar in a traffic jam. Now let's talk about the road itself. The 2.4 GHz network is like an old single lane country road. It's narrow and crowded and even though it's open to everyone, it's not built for speed. Your GTR can't go full throttle here. A 5 GHz network is a wider three lane regional road. It's faster with more room to move but if it's still shared with other cars, your GTR can take full advantage of its potential. A 6 GHz network? That's the cutting edge Nordschleife racetrack. It's practically empty with room to spare for your GTR to unleash its full speed. Now imagine a dedicated highway just for your GTR. No SUVs, no pickup trucks, just your VR data flying down a pristine empty road. That's what you get when you set up a dedicated network just for your Quest headset. Without other devices competing for space, you eliminate the congestion, maximize bandwidth and ensure the smoothest, most reliable experience for wireless PC VR. All that being said, it's absolutely essential that your PC is connected via Ethernet cable to that router, with the only wireless connection being the one between your Quest and the router. This minimizes latency and interference. Now there are two ways to get a dedicated network, and both involve a separate Wi-Fi router that you only use for connecting your Quest and no other devices. The first option is one that connects straight to your PC via USB, like this one from Prism XR or this TP-Link one, which I'll leave links to in the description. These give you the dedicated network you need for great wireless PC VR performance and are the best option on the market right now if you're on a budget. While this is considerably better than using the same home Wi-Fi everyone else in your house connects to, it's not quite ideal, but it is the cheaper option. This restricts you to only playing in the same room as your PC for the best performance and is more prone to interference as well as mostly being a one-trick pony. The other option which I use is a fully separate router, specifically this TP-Link Wi-Fi 6E1 that is highly recommended by the developer of Virtual Desktop. I've had it for years years recommended it to friends too and the experience with it is always flawless. With this you will have your own super speed highway like we talked about earlier. The only downside of Wi-Fi 6E is that it doesn't penetrate walls as well so you'll want to be within line of sight of your play space and I have mine just a few meters away. The advantage is that this can even be put in a different room than your PC if you, for example, have way more space in your living room than your bedroom where your PC is. But of course, you'll still need to ensure you have a way to run an Ethernet cable between the router and your PC, which might prove difficult in some homes. Okay, now that we've sorted out the networking side of things, should you use native AirLink or virtual desktop for actually connecting to your PC? Yo, what about Steam Link? Well, I'm intentionally leaving that out because, well, well, it sucks. It has the least flexibility and options, and if you're after a completely free option, then AirLink is my go-to. But I've extensively tested Virtual Desktop and AirLink over the years, and while AirLink has gotten miles better than it used to be, and of course it has the advantage of being completely free, I would still highly recommend Virtual Desktop. Let me explain why. Simply put, it's just way more reliable, and it has a ton of settings and cool tech packed into it that ensures you can always count on it to deliver fantastic performance. I'll tell you more about the perfect Virtual Desktop settings at the end of this video. Also, also, their relatively new VDXR runtime means you don't need to be running the Quest Link, formerly Oculus app, on your PC while playing, which should give you a bit of a performance boost. But what if you go through all of this and still feel like your performance isn't great? Well, I'll show you how to troubleshoot things right now. Once connected through Virtual Desktop, you'll want to go to the Streaming tab and click on this Performance Overlay checkmark. If it's not showing up, make sure to click both thumbsticks at the same time and it'll become visible. I know this might seem overwhelming, but I'll make it simple. I promise. The two big metrics you want to be paying attention to here are on the top left of the performance overlay, namely your frame rate and the latency. 
Virtual Desktop makes it easy to understand when these are good by showing them in white. If they're in this orange color, then it means we have some work to do. The very first thing I want you to do is open up SteamVR and then click the menu button on your left controller, and this should bring up your SteamVR dashboard. Go to the VR settings and under video, then click the custom button under render resolution. Now, depending on the settings you've made in Virtual Desktop itself, this might be too high, causing strain on both your PC and your network, which results in high latency and poor frame rate. And again, stick around because I'm going to show you how to set up and configure virtual desktop for wireless PC VR perfection. But first, back to this render resolution. Try lowering it up to a point where the frame rate and latency are good and you want to shoot for under 50 milliseconds on the latency, ideally even under 40. You can even set this render resolution per application by clicking this button right here. This is very useful because for some extremely demanding games, you might want it lower, while for others, you can bump it up higher and still get great performance. Now, obviously, when it comes to the games themselves, your PC specs will play a big role in how high you can crank up the game settings, as well as where you can set the render resolution. But if you follow the advice in this video, you will know for sure that any issues or stutters are due to your PC and not your wireless networking setup. As promised, to be 100% sure that you have the correct setup and settings in virtual desktop, you'll want to watch this video next where I talk about all the right tweaks that will give you a fantastic experience using virtual desktop. For any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll catch you soon. Cheers, guys.